A very common argument used by creationists is that life requires information, and therefore it must have been created by a mind. I'll let an idiot from the truth group explain. DNA contains information, therefore the laws of information science apply, which means the information in DNA couldn't have spontaneously generated and that a mind is behind the information, period. No exceptions. Okay, so I suppose the thing to ask now is what the laws of information science are, but... First, I'm gonna have to explain just how stupid this is. Information science is an interdisciplinary field of science that deals with how to store, organize, retrieve, and distribute information. It deals with everything from how to best organize the books in a library to what websites are blocked in China. It doesn't address what information is, how to quantify it, and how it's generated. Such questions are handled in the branch of applied mathematics called information theory which is used in fields such as data compression, coding, cryptography, and to some extent, quantum mechanics, and, uh, oh yeah, the study of so-called molecular codes, such as DNA. Creationist stupidity never ceases to amaze me. They're even wrong about which field of science they're wrong about. So, now, what are the laws of information theory? Number one, matter doesn't spontaneously produce information. And number two, only a mental source, intelligence, can generate new creative information. Okay, so according to information theory, the following quote is incorrect. A physical system or a mathematical model of a system which produces a sequence of symbols governed by a set of probabilities is known as a stochastic process. Any stochastic process which produces a discrete sequence of symbols chosen from a finite set may be considered a discrete source of information. The same source gives the example of a mathematical process that generates a random sequence of letters. Clearly this is not a source of information according to the laws of information theory. Since information cannot be generated by physical or mathematical systems that have no minds. So uh, what's the source I quoted? Oh, the 1948 paper by Claude Shannon, which became the foundation of information theory. I'm linking to it in the description, but here's a spoiler for you. The word mind is mentioned exactly zero times in it. Now I'll grant you that there have been advances in the field since it was first created, but I seriously cannot find any scientific source that mentions these so-called laws of information theory. Anyone care to provide one? Let me guess. Common sense. Because first of all, it's just common sense. This whole thing is based on a fallacy of equivocation. That's when you change the meaning of a word in the middle of the argument. For example, things that are light are not dark. Feathers are light. Therefore, feathers are not dark. In the creationist argument, the word causing the problem is, of course, information. What is information? Ah, information. Yes, but what is it? Ah, information. Yes, 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 but what is it? Ah, information. Didn't think so. In information theory, information is simply a sequence of symbols. What's a symbol? Well, simply put, anything that can be of significance and can be distinguished from something else. Anything that could be assigned meaning. DNA is a sequence of amino acids. As such, it is a sequence of symbols, that is, information. Creationists will hear that and then go on to assume that this means DNA is literally similar to written text, just because both qualify as sequences of symbols, you know, information. They will say, for example, that there is no way Shakespeare's works could have been compiled randomly, and sure, I'd agree. In principle, it's definitely possible, but for all practical intents and purposes, yes, it's absurd. But then they'll go on to say that if you change one letter in one word, information has been lost. Now, if you make random changes to a book, you will not get new information. You will be corrupting the information in the book. It's the exact same thing with DNA. By making unguided changes to the letters of the DNA, you are corrupting the information in the DNA, not producing new information. This indicates a fundamental misunderstanding of information theory. Yes, the original information has been lost, but it has been replaced with new information. 
In fact, you can replace every single letter in Shakespeare's works, and while you have completely destroyed the original information, you have replaced it with the same amount of new information. Yes, even if the letters were selected at random. Here's an experiment you can do at home. Open Notepad, or the equivalent thereof. Write a five-letter word that you think has great significance. I'm gonna pick a word that I'll assume you'll find very significant. Jesus. Clearly there's information there. Save the document and check its size. If you use Notepad, it should be five bytes. One byte for each character. Now open the document again and replace the word Jesus with a random sequence of five letters. Let's say BTKMD. This means nothing, right? Save and check the document size again. It's still five bytes. How can this be? We've replaced information with random gibberish. The information has been destroyed. It should be zero bytes, right? Well, the reason why it's still just as much information is that it's still five letters. What the sequence formed by those five symbols means to the reader is completely irrelevant. If you think BTKMD, or whatever sequence you picked, is less information than Jesus, then you are not using the word information as it is used in information theory. And then I have to ask, how can you say that a sequence of amino acids qualifies as information? Does a random sequence of amino acids count, or only one assembled intentionally by an intelligent entity? How about one that came about through gradual changes that resulted from random mutations followed by natural selection? Does it matter to who or what it has meaning? What if it means something to someone or something other than you, specifically? Is it junk, then? Or is it information? I can only grant you that DNA is information, according to some definition under which information requires a mind, if you first demonstrate that DNA has to be assembled by a mind. But that's the conclusion you're trying to reach. That would make this a circular argument. The only way you can get around this is by using different definitions of information in the first and second premises. DNA is information according to one definition, and information requires a mind under another. It's no longer a circular argument, but because of the equivocation, it's still invalid. Science fail, logic fail, all in all, a typical creationist argument. Bye.